So I was talking with one of my Notion Foundations All Access members and she was talking about how she struggled to maintain friendships and relationships and how she wanted to use Notion to do this. And I thought, wow, that's such a great idea to add into my ADHD Life Tracker template. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to use Notion to track and maintain relationships, friendships with people, especially if you have ADHD where it can be a huge, huge challenge. So we're gonna talk about this in today's video. Make sure to subscribe for more content around ADHD, marketing, productivity, and digital organization and let's get to this video. Let's talk a little bit about why this is really important, especially for ADHDers. So one of the things that I don't know about you, but I forget that people exist. <laughs> like I am so bad at knowing that I haven't caught up with someone in a while. I can't remember the last time I've seen someone. There's people who I haven't seen since the pandemic and I'm like, oh yeah, like how's it going? Like I, I view relationships very differently. I think than a lot of people, it's very much like when I see you, I see you and I'm in the moment. But a lot of other people, especially neurotypical people, don't view relationships that way. They're like, oh, you haven't talked to me in six months. And then they get mad and I'm like, oh, but it feels like I just saw you. So again, when it comes to time blindness and just out of sight, out of mind, this is a really, really difficult situation for me and it has affected a lot of my relationships and friendships over the years. So what are we gonna do? We are going to remind ourselves using technology that our friends actually exist. So when I launched my ADC Life Tracker template, I created a system called a Customer Relationship Manager, a CRM, which is very, very popular in business. But you can also use this CRM to track friendships. So we'll be walking through that in my Notion template about how to do that, how to organize your friends and add them to almost like your Rolodex, your, your customer database, but just for friendship. And you can kind of mix them in with your business friends as well. So this is something that I'd recommend doing and let's just get to that. Okay, so let's talk about how to set up the CRM within the ADHD Life Tracker template uh, database. So we're gonna go down to this button that says CRM. So this is if you have the latest version of the template that should be on there. You're gonna open that up and then what you're going to do is you are going to go inside and you're going to see that there's a couple different options. So right now you can see we have business connections and you know some of them have icons, some don't. You can add whatever you want. You can see this is how I've set it up and I wanna show you guys some of the automations that you can use within this. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna change their status. So whether you're waiting on someone, you're, you need to follow up with them if it's active or if you are done maybe talking to them, you don't need to follow up do not contact, which is another one. Um, or if there's like, again, personal, like if you have to get in touch, maybe there's a family situation, maybe uh, they're going through something hard or maybe it's their birthday or something. So you can kind of change these statuses, add your own. I just wanted to start with those. Again, we've got two different types. We've got business connections and we've got friends. I put them all in one database because I think to me, like business friends are also friends. So it's kind of, they all kind of merge together. So here you can add first and last name if you'd like. Um, email, this is a helpful way to sort of have another place to put email. Phone number, preferred way of contact. So if it's text, call, or email, that's actually really helpful. Sometimes you could even put like WhatsApp or Slack. Um, you can add your own as well. This is an important one, adding their birthday. You can also add the birth year so you can actually see how old they are. So that's something that if you have a close friend, you can add their birthday. Um, you can add gender, especially if they're a business contact, you you know wanna make sure that they're the correct gender. Um, this is if you have like an intake form for a client, you can just select yes or no for that one. I kept that one in. Um, website link, last contact. So this is really like, when was the last time you talked to them? Was it a year ago? Was it two years ago? You can put the date in, you can check maybe your last email just so that you know the last time you contacted them. And if it gets over a certain amount of time, you can kind of double check on that. This is where you can write information about that person. So uh, maybe their spouse's name, children's names, um, any topic of conversation, just you can put a bunch of information. You can also open up the contact and put that as well. And then links to some of their social media. This is the part that I think is the, gonna be the biggest update that I've had for this um, template. So this is if you want to email, text, or call them and to add it to your to-do list. So I made a button automation. This is a brand new feature within Notion. So I'll give you guys an example. So let's say that um, I wanna talk to Jane Smith. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change to get in touch, maybe it's their birthday. Um, you can add that in, get in touch. So let's say it is um, their birthday and you wanna text them. What you're gonna do is you're gonna click the button text 
And then oh, you'll see over here, it gets added here to the to-do list. So you can see that it created one page. Now, if I go over to my to-do list, which is right here, it's in the related database. Now you will see when I pop over here in the no pillars, um, once it once it updates, um, you will see it now says text and then it has the contact Jane Smith. So from here, you can add things like dates, um, you know, priority, whatever you want. So if, if, if her birthday's next week, you could put it at a priority of, um, let's see, maybe a priority two, maybe it's a, maybe it's a high, medium priority, right? You can add whatever you want to that, but this way it shows the actual action, which is to text them and the person right next to it. I thought that this was the best way to start to do tasks because it's really easy for you to know exactly who this person is. And this is not just for personal, this could also be for business. Like I need to email so-and-so, for example, email Dr. Joe. And then it links right back over to their contact information. So you could add in this to-do list all of the information and the roll-up of all of the stuff, but I just prefer to keep that in the uh, contacts database. So I just wanted to show this because I think it's helpful for you guys to see like, you know, how you can start to use the database to, um, you know, start to remember all the things about your friends and to actually remind you when you need to, maybe once a month you go through your, your contacts and you start adding text or call these people and then it adds it to your to-do list. You could also set up a reminder, um, every, maybe every 60 to 90 days, you can add an automation within your to-do list to email so-and-so. And it could be maybe every Monday you call your mother. So you could add um, a template that way if you wanted to, where it automatically adds that to the uh, database. Otherwise you could just add it manually as well. So I just wanted to share that as like an option that is now part of the ADHD life tracker template. So that option is there if you would like to use that within this. And this is an example of what to do with that. If you would like to add a recurring um, thing, like for example, call mom, um, what you're going to do is you're going to do new template and the template is going to be call mom. You could add things like um, the contacts. It could be mom you could have that there so let's just do that priority hi whatever you want you could add a roll up whatever you'd like but what you're going to do is when you go back you are going to add this to here and what you're going to do is you're going to add it as a repeat so maybe it's every week um on monday at eight o'clock a.m you are going to call mom so you will see that that at that moment, it will uh, add it to your to-do list. So that is just another easy way to add a recurring or repeatable task, especially if it's something that you do on a regular basis. Maybe every 90 days, you can add, you know, text your uncle or whatever it is. That is another way to set it up inside of the database. So why are we doing this? Why, what is the main reason behind adding this to our Notion database? I think it's something called micro interactions. These are the small little things, the little small gestures that we just kind of forget to do, you know, saying hi to someone or messaging them on their birthday or just sending a quick text asking them how they're doing. This is something that I don't know if you, I don't know about you, but I personally struggle with. It is something that I have never been good at and I'm very much more of an in-person person. I like to see people in person. I'm not a big fan of messaging, but a lot of people are. And so just reaching out to people um, and making sure that they're good and that you reconnect is a really great thing to do to continue friendships long-term. Maybe you thought of something that reminded them of something or some anything that you document in your life. You could tag your friend or send them a funny meme or send them an Instagram story. I think people really feel good when people think about them that way. I don't know if you, I don't know about you, but if I ever get a message from someone that's like, oh, this made me think of you, that is like the nicest thing in the world. It totally makes your day. So that's another thing about this that we can kind of use Notion for is to manage um, just anytime you have information about someone, you can add like the joke or a reference or something maybe that you talked about them with. Um, because 
some I'm pretty good at remembering um, things about people, but some people aren't. For me, it's more of remembering they exist until I see them right in front of me. But that's that's another story. Okay, this is another thing that you can use technology for, and that is batching your outreach. So maybe you send a bunch of messages to people once a month. Maybe maybe the first day of the month you send 50 texts to different people that you know or whatever. And then, you know, wait for responses. But that way it's like every single month you are sending out messages to people, asking them how they've been or or just sending them something that is nice or just or commenting on their Instagram posts. That's something that's so easy to do is just spend some time going through someone's social media and just liking or commenting on their posts or you know responding to their stories people really do appreciate it maybe set up like a 30 minute timer and just spend that time messaging people um this would be this is actually something i should start doing because again i struggle with this a lot okay this is another important thing to think about is not everyone likes to talk the same way um, I have friends who love to talk on the phone and they'll talk for like hours to people. I'm not that person. I'm not gonna be on a phone call for hours. I also don't really like texting that much. I would much rather go to coffee with someone and be in person and talk to them. Not distracted, just one-on-one -on -one interaction. Some people hate that. Some people don't like being in person. They like to be home and they like to just be texting. I have another friend who loves to text and she just sends really long texts. So, one of the things you can put in your CRM is their preferred way of talking. That again is based off of them and you and how your relationship works. And again, this is just a preference thing, uh, figuring out or even asking your friends like, hey, how do you like to talk most? Like, do you, would you rather go out to coffee? Do you like to do phone calls? That really can help with your communication. The last thing I want to mention is like just giving you guys grace and being kind to yourself. You know, friendships and communication are a really big struggle in the ADHD and neurodivergent community, and it's okay if you mess up. I have lost many friends over my lifetime, probably due to my own issues of, of, of communication and maybe not staying in touch with people, losing track, and just, you know, the time has just gotten too far that it's just hard to bring it back to where it was. But I have also been okay with that. I believe that people come into our lives for a reason, a season or a lifetime. And the ones that are there for a lifetime, you really do have to keep up with them. Um, I have a friend of mine from college who I, you know, moved away, but I still keep in touch with him. You know, I still message him every couple months seeing how he's doing. So again, like it's not someone I talk to on a daily basis, but it's someone that I want to keep in my life and I don't want to lose track completely and lose touch. The so one thing also is, you know, making sure people understand your ADHD or understand your communication method and just kind of telling them, hey, I might not be, I might not remember to message you. So maybe asking them to be the first one to reach out because you struggle to remember to initiate or like apologizing and rescheduling, like making sure that people understand that this is something you struggle with. And sometimes people are not gonna be okay with it. They are just going to be very against like they just aren't going to believe you. They're going to say, well, you, you are doing this on purpose. Like you're just, you know, this is, people are going to say that the types of people that are combative probably are not the ones that you want to be that connected with. I'm going to be honest. Like there's people in my life who I have literally been like, you don't understand me and you don't have grace for me. So I don't really want that energy in my life. The ones that are okay with me just you know being myself those are the ones you want to keep around and it's hard to find so when you do find those people that really get you and understand you and give you grace and and give you uh don't make you feel guilty about the way that you communicate with them you do want to keep those people in your life so those people you want to definitely put a little bit more effort towards so anyways, I hope that this video was helpful. This is a very interesting topic. I've never thought about doing a video on this until um, one of my students uh, mentioned it. And I thought it was so important because in today's day and age, we all struggle to communicate. Social media makes it easier, but also harder than ever to get in touch. Like we, we can quickly, you know, be in touch with anyone in the world, but yet is that relationship even deep or is it just surface level, right? So. I hope that this video is helpful and I hope that you guys um, check out both Notion Foundations All Access, which is the all-in-one course as well as um, with all the templates. And I am updating a lot of the videos right now, so I'm really excited. Um, they are gonna be uh, hopefully by the end of 
uh, March, they should be all up to date and current. And then also, uh, if you just wanna buy the Life Tracker template, that's also available. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.